On the opposite side, Varus from RNG towards Zet once more. So triple bot lane bans to start this one off. And that could be indicative, like you were suggesting, that RNG are going to put all of their cards into that bottom lane and try to brute force the 2v2. You would expect then that they're going to prioritize uh, both ADC and support in the initial rotations. You'd have to assume so. Lulu is still on the board if RNG wants it down for Ming. Just give Uzi freedom of choice towards what he wants next. But there's a Caitlyn, there's Ash, there's pretty much everything apart from Cogmore, which was the final ban from EDG. Ash certainly stands out to me as kind of the pri uh, primary pick. Yep, there we go. I was yep. going to say, yeah, Uzi can go towards his Caitlyn, but anytime Ash is available, the LPL teams have uh, jumped at the opportunity to play an initiation from that position. As much as we love to see the Lucian down on Uzi, it is slightly below the priority of those two champions. Regardless, EDG first lock in the Karma and instantly lock the Graze for Fire Lolly. So he's going to be happy with that champion. He's done some real work over the split. And reminder, it is 7.7, .7, so Graves has seen a little bit of those nerfs. Still very strong right now. And the Karma does act as a flex pick for EDG. Scout can take it in the mid lane, although I'm pretty sure it's going in Mako's hands. And at the same time, picking Elise into the Graves makes more and more sense on 7.7 .7 in that jungle matchup. Thresh will be brought through for Ming as well to make those plays with Uzi in the bottom lane. On the opposite side, Zet will bring in the Caitlyn before these bans come through. So lots of priority on this bottom side. And I feel like the gauntlet has been thrown not just in the 2v2 push priority, but also in the jungle 1v1 dueling. Like you said, taking that Elise into the graves, knowing that your dueling potential is that much higher, which now makes more sense why EDG would prioritize Karma over Lulu. They want the pushing priority. They want Kate and Karma to shove Ash and uh, Thresh under tower so they can open up space, get into that jungle, and help Fire Oli lay down those duels. But with so much priority on the bottom side of the map in the first phase, both teams will look towards the mid lane and top lane now with these bands. Jace comes through here for Zhao Hu and on the opposite side, Zed taken away from Scout. So some of his uh, favorite assassins off the table while Shen taken away from Let Me. Yeah, making sure that they don't have those big ADs to play in the mid lane, especially for Xiaohu, because you do see the AP carry coming out of the jungle, so it would make sense that they would need a bit more AD in their top and their mid positions. Talon's still available, but he was also hit with those nurse on 7.7. .7. Gragas comes in as priority here, and that means that Fizz is left open as well. And that's a very real possibility here for Let Me In. He's very keen, because he's just swapped the Sonas to Ignite Teleport, so you'd have to assume that they're going to lock it in here. Pretty risky, though. I mean, we were just talking about this earlier, Pulse, before the games, because we were mm -hmm. taking a peek at Fizz and Gragas and how those matchups really work on a micro level in the top lane. And it doesn't always go according to plan for the Fizz, at least not early. Late game, though, he really starts to get out of control. Yeah, the first couple levels are very vital for him. We'll touch on that once more as we get into those laning phases. But RNG, final pick will be LeBlanc for Zhao Hu. So he's really throwing down the gauntlet and the hook against Scout here. We'll see what that pick will be for him. It's most likely going to be the Karma flexed into the mid lane now. We'll see what Meku decides for his support. I have to say, I'm honestly very surprised. I thought for sure they were going to go for pushing priority, but maybe they don't feel that's much of a threat since it is a Thrash and not another hard pushing champion. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be the Braum. Wow, okay. Braum brought into the bottom lane. So we have our completed lineups now. RNG, Fizz in the top side, LeBlanc in the mid lane, looking to make those plays towards that mid game. But Scout going back towards the Karma, and we... I mean, we know the damage that Karma can do, but I was surprised not to see uh, Karma, as you said, flexed into the bottom side, and then for Scout to go for something different. I mean, Cinder was still available. There's a bunch of stuff in the mid lane. Talia was still available. That's the big oh, one that's yeah. missing from all of these bands. And Scout has been a monster on that champion. We've seen her rampaging through the rest of the LPL, really brought to popularity by Rookie in particular. But Scout on the Talia, especially for EDG's priority on bottom lane, has been so potent. So I feel like it was actually a big mistake not to go that direction. That was a nice uh, quote-unquote handshake there from the coaches. No Faye and Firefox there. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready for this game. And it's game one, so there's no blad, uh, bad blood just yet. We'll see what happens when we get towards game three and match point. And it will definitely be uh, more serious. But for now, this is the start of the best of five. It's the start of a long road for both of these two teams to try and lock themselves into those finals. And we no longer have kind of the, the newcomer coming in. You know, between Team W and OMG, there's always that question mark of can OMG keep their mental fortitude in a long best of five? They mm -hmm. really don't have experience at this uh, level of pressure with that roster. RNG, EDG, even though these are different rosters, neither of these teams are unfamiliar with the high stakes that are on the line now. That's very true. And you have to look towards some of the veterans, like Uzi even, 
to uh, give that kind of moral support. But however, Uzi's more of a drill sergeant, I would have to assume in a situation like this for us. So look towards me, he's like, get in line, maggots. We're going to win this series. I mean, Uzi can definitely step up and be that miracle, that Hail Mary play when it all needs. But right now, I'm looking towards the support. Ming versus Mako, the two captains, the shot callers of both of these elite teams. Mako has been hand carved by EDG, has now become the dominant support in the region, while Ming is the up and coming rookie, and he has a lot to prove here. And while we may not see it on the rift, we'll see it through the shot calling because we know he is the shot caller for the team. And that will really come to a head in this game. We're getting into game one here of this best of five. EDG against RNG making their way to the finals. And you can already see a ton of pings going across the board as we get into our level one plays. And EDG actually grouped up. This is quite suspicious. They've done this a couple of times as we do take a peek at Keystone Masteries, but I want to quickly hit the deep vision. So EDG have this tendency to drop deep vision over enemy red and then look for an immediate push and delay invade. Yeah, Stoneborn packed as well onto uh, Mako here with the Braum. Usually it's worked in tandem though with it Ignite because it in, uh, it's indicative of an all-in level two or level three, especially with early jungle pressure because you try to make use of the Stoneborn pack extra damage at lower levels, but hold on. Oh, MLG, MLXG rather turns the corner right into Fire Lolly and Mouse and takes so much down, surely he's gonna go down. First blood to Fire Lolly to start off the series. And that is not an MLG start for sure. And that's why this deep vision is so important from EDG. They do this almost every single game now. They figure out where the enemy jungler is starting. MLXG wasn't spot him on the bottom side of his map. So they set a trap in Fog of War, waited for him to turn a corner and turned it into first blood. There's already a bit of uh, trading going on in the bottom side, but it's not going to turn into too much. That being said, Fire Lolly looking for an initial invade now onto MLXG's jungle, taking away this blue buff. We'll see if he can actually make that triple buff happen for himself, because surely MLXG will start on his red and look towards that blue buff now. You would think so, but now it's all eyes on Mako and Zet to see if they can sneak into the river and place down a ward to spot the Elise making her way towards that blue, which is why Uzi and Ming are suddenly so aggro in lane. They want to make sure that they have control of this to open up space for Elise. Yeah, incredi incredibly important for this bottom side of the map, RNG to assist their jungler. MLXG taking the fast path as well, using the repel to jump over that wall. Oh, actually, wait, how does he even get over there? He uh, went over with the oh, blast, blast plan. plan. Yeah, that makes sense. I was like, well, he's got a point in W. That doesn't make sense. Top lane getting absolutely blasted. And because Mouse got that priority to lane, this is going to happen. And again, we were talking about this a little bit before the match poll, so you feel comfortable. When does it actually get okay for Fizz across from Gragas? Is it level 5, level 6? Well, he just needs more time, honestly, in that top lane because in the first couple levels, I was looking towards this bottom side, Zek getting a lot of damage onto Ming. In the first couple levels, if you don't get that initial harass off, if you don't get an auto, uh, auto attack down with your W, following up with an urchin strike onto mouse and actually get a good trade early on, he simply has more abilities to click on you. And Gragas is going to run all over that matchup. W just simply does too much damage. Mouse can now go two different ways. You can see he's now level three, level four. We'll see. He puts two points into the barrel so he can continue abusing that matchup, pushing the minion wave, and there's nothing that Let Me can do now. And with that minion wave being pushed in, it means that the fact that Zet and Mako don't have control of the bot side isn't as punishing. Fire Lily has a different option. We know that EDG like to go towards the bottom of the lane, but Fire Lily could look top, especially to try to put that fizz down early. It's definitely some die pressure. They can get the E out of him. Xiaohu getting blasted in that middle lane. Scout putting down lots of harassment, but all in all, pretty much equal farm in that one. Bot lane also pretty equal. I'm shocked that MLXG didn't choose to pull the trigger on that. Uzi and Ming obviously not feeling comfortable with the amount of creeps they had in front of them, as well as the fact that they didn't have eyes on Fire Lily, but he has been spotted out twice now. Well, it's good for RNG actually keeping a, a track of Fire Lolly in this early game since he did get that pretty nice start for himself. And it's a bit of calm on the rift as you see the tension is building, but it's not there quite yet. And it does give us a bit of space where we can really talk about what these compositions want to do and look towards where teams are going to make their plays. So as I say that, they'll let me. He's like, no, nope, we're going to fight right now. I think he's OK, though. Yeah, once he gets a couple levels under his belt and a couple levels in W, he can really start trading back on towards that top lane. And then gang coming happen. And a flash out from Scout. Did not want to get locked down by the uh, ethereal chains there. And that certainly can be punished even further, though. Hold on, Fire Lolly. Well, OK, MLXG gets a 
Nice bit of burst down, but he nice. dodges the cocoon. This could be real bad for MLXG, who dukes into the jungle, but that's going to be picked up by Scout. And MLXG, of all the players in this map, I did not expect him to be two kills down at five minutes into the game. I feel like I'm watching a replay there. Deja vu, he dies in the exact same spot. And wow, a teleport actually coming down to dissuade Xiaohu there from chasing onto Fire Loli. Meanwhile, bot. A bit of bit of damage, but not going to result in too much. And this is such a good start for EDG, being a thousand gold ahead, and so much of that being around that jungle and mid part of the map. And it immediately translates into information gathering from Fire Loli. Now that MLXG is off the map, now that the Graves and Scout are on that springboard forward, Fire Loli's slipping and he's continuously placing down that deep vision. So now the question is, what do EDG actually do with it? Because Scout is still pressuring that mid side. Just the fact that he has that level six now and the extra kill. He's gone back to base, picked up the chalice. So that pressure is going to be unrelenting. And Fire Loli, I want to see what pressure he exerts because remember, he is the guy taking over from Clearlove, and he's done that for nine out of the ten weeks that we've seen in uh, in the spring split. And he's gotten better and better. From the start of the split, you look towards this guy, and it's like, well, this he's maybe above average as a jungler, if that, when you have such a stacked role, but he's really made a name for himself. And he's showed up in high-pressure situations in particular. I feel like there's been a lot of instances where EDG have... Uh, kind of stalled out in the mid game and need to rely on their jungler late game to make those game changing smites. But it looks like he's trying to get started early. There were a couple of pings saying that he wanted to dive mid, but now rushing top. Chum the waters used the mouse and let me may even just have this kill by himself. He needs to confirm it because mouse still has his ultimate. He's in kill range and MLXG knocked against the wall, uses the ultimate and it's an easy auto attack. Thunderlords comes in, MLXG turns Lolly. one around, but Fire Lolly into the top side. Doesn't have that level six, but he's looking for the kill. Urchin Strike out of the way. Playful Trickster comes in, is doing all the damage that he can onto Fire Lord. He's trying to turn us in to two kills for RNG. And there it is, MLXG, last auto attack. But Scout has rotated from the mid lane. He's on a timer because there is a TP out from Zhao, who he arrives, turns it back around onto Scout. Not going to be a kill, but enough to dissuade him from his jungler. But suddenly, MLXG is back in this game. So on the right foot was 0-2, now 2-2. Big props to Let Me setting him up for success there, making sure that he sidestepped the initial uh, damage from Graves and traded back evenly to trade the kill. Fire Lolly really wishing he was level six in that circumstance, otherwise it would have been a much easier trade for him, but was just trying to salvage that situation in all honesty. And all in all, that's now two to three in terms of kills across the map and RNG are right back into it. Unfortunately, though, I feel like RNG would have felt a bit more comfortable having that gold transitioned onto the Fizz. That said, he's still going to be a massive problem late game, especially across from his 1v1 lane assignment in Gragas. See what MLXG does with the gold instead. I suspected that we might have a Moby uh, transition since he got the two early kills, but instead he sticks the path. And I think usually that would be correct for us, but that's usually when he gets two kills without dying two <laughs> times as well. If he gets his early kills, he almost certainly goes and tries to snowball it into more ganks, but uh, I don't think he was expecting it to go that well. So now he's caught up with Phylon. He may even still go that route, but we've got eight minutes of laying phase already down the drain, so he may just go damage from here. And he knows that he can start trading off against Phylon. He has this small window where he can do that. The scary thing, though, is that his level 6 isn't going to mean much for him, especially across from Fire Lily's level 6. So while he's better now that he has the two kills, it's still going to be like, you know, five minutes before he really feels comfortable trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Graves when he immediately gets the Graves ultimate because he's afraid of that burst damage. Yeah, funnily enough, it's actually terrain-reliant. If they meet each other in the river, then MLXG will probably have the upper hand. It's pretty much like Fog of War MVP. Mm. Who gets the cocoon? Yeah, pretty much. Except Fala's cocoon is a Q, and it does a lot of damage. It hurts. Yeah, it really does. Bottom lane, Uzi is getting an advantage e ever so slightly in terms of CS. You can see the pressure being exerted by himself and Ming. And Zet and Mako just having to respect it for now, but it's not like they're down and out of this matchup. Still 0-0 zero to zero in terms of kills. And we can't take a, uh, a peek at Zet's itemization, so it's always kind of a gamble, a question mark. Is Caitlyn going to go for the Blade of the Rune King, or is she going to go the traditional route towards the Infinity Edge? With Zet having the BF Sword, tells me that he's going to go the more traditional route, and it makes sense for that, just because RNG don't really have a tank. They do have Fizz up in the top lane, and can kind of have that superficial tankiness because he can bounce around, you know, be untargetable, deny a lot of that potential damage. Um, but Caitlyn's going to be doing so much more work with the Infinity Edge and doesn't need the Shred from the Blade of the Rune King. 
Mako's just getting dragged in here. It's going to be a kill. Mako is still very tanky at this point in time. It's almost being, uh, it's like a glass tank, right? Where you're pretty squishy, but you can buy time. It's like Lissandra when she used to be in the meta. You just stood in the front of the back line for like literally seven seconds with Sonya as an ultimate. There's nothing they could do. So I'll be pretty good for uh, Let Me as he gets later on into this game. He's already starting off and feels comfortable enough to start going for that Triforce and start putting it towards Mouse. He has gone for that triple Doran setup and has the normal Magic Mantle, which is uh, very important in this early landing phase. Trying to get that MR so he can survive a lot of the W trading potential on Fizz, as well as all of the health that the triple Dorans allows him. Yeah, it's just nice. Puts him out of kill range, pretty much, of Let Me's ultimate and the Ignite, of course, coming in. Scout. Still even in this middle lane, has a slight advantage over Zhao Hun. He's just kind of pushing him around, and that's the biggest thing. It's not tangible, but you can actually see him pressuring Zhao Hu back and allowing Fire Lolly into the opposing jungle. But the issue is, is that Team EDG have really capitalized on this. This might be a kill here for us, because Let Me is knocked away. Mouse has to burn his ultimate, because Let Me did have the urgent strike, but didn't want to go any further. I was so hesitant. I was like, Flash is up, ult is up. How is he going to outplay this? But meanwhile, bot. Well, Ming is going deep right here. Takes the ultimate. Lands the hook onto Fire Lolly. MLXG is not in the best position. And Zhao Hu is caught off to the top side split from his team. He'll jump away with the distortion. No kills go down. And no one pulls the trigger on teleport either. So both teams making the call to back up across map. Good communication there. Yeah, TPs, two TPs on both sides, in fact, to get involved in these fights. But back to the point that I was trying to make. Yes, Scout has control of the mid lane, and yeah, he's kind of shoving Xiaohu around, opening up space for Fire Lily, but it's not translating into anything tangible. You know, they're not getting those ganks bottom. It's 12 minutes in the game, and a tower hasn't fallen. And other people, like the global audience, be like, ah, oh, that seems pretty normal. Nah. EDG have the fastest tower average of any team in the LPL. It goes down around eight minutes. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because it's just the way that they play the map. It's not just because like an Uzi went down there and killed it by himself. This is EDG we're talking about. And Zet, while he has that laning phase, it's not quite the same as the star power of other AD carries down there. Regardless, Fire Lolly and Mako are setting up around this dragon area, take down the crab, place down all these control wards as well. It's uh, a little suspicious, so Ming will head up there and place down some wards of his own. Meanwhile, Scout is just running Zhao Hu around in this mid lane. It has Fire Lolly behind him, but dodging out of the distortion, just baiting him into using his abilities. And Fire Lolly is just like a ping pong ball right now between bottom and mid, trying to find any sort of opening where he can go aggressive and make use of that grave strength. Unfortunately, though, for him, RNG are doing a phenomenal job absorbing a lot of his time. Sweeper will locate a spider in the brush in the form of MLXG. What a dodge from Viololi, expecting the cocoon to come in. And now that he doesn't have that dodge or the extra ability. Wow, well, Scout, what are you doing? You're going to have to flash over the wall there. Surprised he didn't fi uh, follow Viololi. Guess he didn't want to line himself up against the wall there for Zhao, who, who still wants this kill. Distortions in, misses the chains. That should be the end of it. Mako and Ming both rotating towards that mid lane, so everyone trying to collapse here. This is more so what I was expecting, but we continue to fight over these Raptor camps. The LPL loves those Raptor camps. But it means so much for them as well in terms of control, especially but in the early game. The, uh, specifically the blue Raptor camp more so than the red one, just because it's so much easier as a control point. It's a high traffic area, and when you go to take control of a dragon, you usually have to bring, you know, three, four, five members because it's going to turn into a big brawl. Taking control of Raptor camp, at most you can do two, or you can just do one. And it's usually mid lane priority, jungler comes in. And that starts opening up what we like to call the silk road behind the dragon pit to those gank past bottom. And everything's about bottom in the early game because it has the easier objective to take. It has the bot lane tower as well as the dragon. Weirdly enough in this matchup as well for us, it does also go towards top side because you look towards the Herald and definitely let me would want that in that split push up against Mouse. So it does also open up, the, uh, open up that opportunity for them. We now look towards the bottom side as Blade of the Ruin King has been completed by Uzi going for that very traditional Ash build that we've been seeing out of him. Meanwhile, Zet, of course, going towards Infinity Edge, but he actually completes the Infinity Edge now before going for anything else. The scout's going to take a fair brunt of damage, but Mako is on his way just to uh, ward Jiahu off his mid laner. Usually a completed I edge first rather than the flat AD as well as attack speed. It's kind of the difference between the 5v5 build versus the wave clear build. When LPL AD carries do it, it's saying that we want to fight right then and now. So usually when I see this, it's when we're going to immediately collapse on a dragon or look for a big skirmish. So the lack of attack speed is uh, still interesting because he doesn't have a support in this game that's going to augment that. Like doesn't a Lulu. have the Lulu. Yeah, so he's got a Braum, unfortunately. 
but still, that's what he's looking for. Which you would almost think is a direct kind of nerf to himself, just because he's not going to have the attack intuitive. speed to get the concussive blows proc even faster. But I have faith in Zet. He's one of those players who uh, definitely have faith. He knows what he's doing. Mid lane looking to clear this one out, and Scar's actually just staying at tower. Looks like he just doesn't want to take too much damage. It might be a setup on Dragon, and you can see both teams actually converging on this area, specifically RNG, sending mid lane and jungler. Grabs up, Ward goes down, and EDG have pretty much sacked control over this area. So we didn't get a chance to really talk about what these compositions do, but now that we're having this vision game played out, we can. RNG have a pick composition through and through. Elise, Ash, Thresh, uh, and LeBlanc. If they ever get vision control of an area like they do now, it's so dangerous for anyone of EDG to check in. They feel confident because they have that one ward that they're standing on top of, but here comes the teleport. Well, they split, Fire Lolly jumps away, uses the ultimate to open up some distance. A flash from Mako slows down Ming, takes that big headshot right to the face. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, Scout has been called out by Lemmy and he's doing so much damage. Mouse over the wall, but he's too late to save his ally. And Fire Lolly's low. Lemmy is looking for the kill and he's ticking out from that Sea Stone Trident. Down goes that kill. Zed's gonna get exploded. And Mouse nowhere to go. Five for zero. RNG take the ace at 16 minutes. And that is not what you want to see as an EDG fan. Absolutely obliterated across the board. And so much of that gold went on Let Me there. Fizz already has the completed Trinity Force. And it's about to get worse with that triple kill. That was a disastrous start to the game for EDG. They're going to lose the Dragon here. Lost five kills worth of gold. Mid tower being pushed in as the opposite of what they wanted, but it was down for that initial split you saw at the start. We're going to take a look at that one in a second with the replay, but it did not start off well and it did not end well. And this is the other nice thing about RNG's composition is that EDG's comp really only works as a 5v5. RNG's comp is so much better at skirmishing when it turns into these 2v2s and these 3v3s. So all I should really be on Let Me and Xiaohu in this backline here, because EDG indecisive. Are we pushing on to Uzi? No, we need to pull back and help our team. It then puts them in this little tiny choke point and the rest of RNG and you're just able to run them through. But let me, doing so much work this fight. There was just no escape for anyone on that team. Fizz will chase you down until the ends of Summoner's Rift. And that's just fundamental poor decision and communication from EDG. Scout shouldn't have been on that side. You always come from the same side if you're going to contest a dragon like that. And come from the side that you had your vision on, which was underneath the blue ramp, not underneath the banana brush. Let's talk about let me for a second, because his arrival was perfect timing came up, instantly nuked down a target, one of the high priority uh, targets, in fact, of Scout. Now he's 3-1 and 3, has the Triforce, is only get, gonna get tankier from here. He has eight stacks in his Dark Seal. This is like the dream scenario for a Fizz. I mean, Fizz is always going to be that big problem. Like you said, now we springboarded or leapfrogged even farther ahead. But my biggest issue is that even if EDG managed to take down Fizz, they still have so many other threats on RNG's composition to worry about. Uzi, 0-0-4, zero, zero, uh, he's going to start popping off as soon as he has second item completed on this Ash build, as well as the fact that with the uh, Abyssal route, LeBlanc's also going to have a mid-game power spike. The arrow connecting bot lane, but the hook wasn't there. And that's just a little bit of Uzi and Ming not being on the same page. This was actually quite an inefficient item first. I think the only champion that actually has a, a cost efficient build for Abyssal Rush is Galio, mm -hmm. just due to Galio's kit. Yep. And that's been a constant uh, kind of back and forth in the community on whether Abyssal first is good. Usually it's not. But Xiaohu's going for it regardless. But and we're not actually seeing that Gunblade initial build that we see out of so many LeBlancs nowadays. I actually find it quite suspicious, actually. You know, I set it up as I was delivering the point, mm -hmm. thinking that he would already have the Hextech Revolver looking for that Gunblade, right. so it would be a huge mid-game power spike. And he's like, nah, Abyssal, pump the brakes. I wonder what he's going from, uh, from here on out, because he has the Blasting Wand and an Amp Tone, which is indicative of a Void Star. But what does he need to tear through? Well, most of the team, because everyone's got magic resist, to be fair. I mean, the nice thing is, is it does help him out across from Scout in particular. And really, he's just been sitting here making sure that Scout can't roam. Because uh, you look at that, you're like, well, the MR, he's against 280 carries. And it's really just Karma, who should theoretically fall off late game. Although Doinbee's certainly proved that wrong. Feels very backwards as well. It's just like the fact that Xiaohu on LeBlanc is stopping Scout on Karma from roaming. But that really is his job in this game, because Letme's having a great uh, time in topside, jungle's doing well, bottom is just farming away and is, is pretty happy, so he doesn't need to roam, he just needs to let this 
side lanes and the star power win this game for them. And this is the bleeding over of Let Me's power right now. The fact that RNG have complete control over the top side of the map. They can walk into Fire Lily's jungle at any point and say, this is mine, this is mine, and we're taking these as well. Ah, oh, the Raptors too. Feels bad. Literally everything. They're just beating up Fire Lolly and taking his lunch money, and there's nothing he can do about it. It's, uh, oh wow. And then Uzi's like, you get that red buff, I get this red buff. So not only this is it bleeding over into the jungle, but now the bot lane. The dominoes have been set up and they are rapidly falling over. EDG just have no way of stopping the bleeding right now. Luckily, next dragon is going to be a cloud. So EDG aren't forced out of their base and just have to uh, fight over this objective. And no towers have actually gone down just yet, so it's not all doom and gloom for them. But that's totally fine for RNG as well. You know, we're naturally winning all of our lanes and getting all of the jungle, so we don't need to drop the towers. We don't need to use the power of the Ash yet until we're 100% ready to go, which for Uzi, he's usually like, nope, let me farm. I'm not strong yet. But once he is, then he starts to turn on. And yeah, I guess it's nice for EDG because the big thing that they're waiting for then is Caitlyn's big power spike. So they're looking 30, 35, 40 minutes into this game. Arrow loosed, doesn't land onto Zet. Z looks for that sidestep, and by sidestep, I mean he stood still. But Bot Tower will go down here from RNG, and they'll be the first one of the game. Meanwhile, top lane, let me just bullying around Mouse, and this is how oppressive that matchup can go. And that was basically a full health Braggers, and he's gone for a magic resist item. Doesn't matter. With Uzi dropping that arrow, however, it means that they can't immediately rotate to the mid lane, throw it from Fog of War. So I'd expect that Uzi would actually go towards the top lane. Unless they want to try to kick Xiaohu down bottom with the teleport. So, see where he starts running. He's coming in. Nice body slam coming in from Mouse. Stops the Urchin Strike. Playful tricks there. But I mean, Scout's going to come in there. And the ultimate combo slays the Fizz. Mouse, the one bright side for EDG still on the roster. He's doing a bit better across from Fizz now that he has two magic resistance items up as well as all of those rings. But my question has been answered and Uzi is rushing towards the top lane. Again, doesn't have that arrow, can't randomly throw it from Fog of War to catch Scout out. So he's gonna pick up the farm and take the long push for another tower. RNG though, the fact that they've taken down bottom side means that their bottom lane is unlocked. MLXG is gonna come up here and they're looking to take top tower. Fire Lolly and Mouse burning both of their ultimates in that exchange means they will not be able to defend. And mid lane Zet and Mako are pushing in Jauhu, but he's just going to keep them here. Clear out that minion wave with the, uh, with the Shatter. And RNG will continue to accentuate the gold lead. And the scary thing is because Elise is up here and they have a cannon wave, uh, it means that EDG need to respond towards the top side. There's that threat that RNG could theoretically push through, and EDG don't have the vision, which is why you see Braum, uh, Mako, and Zet shadowing up underneath. The very least, Scout should be able to take this bot tower, but let me. Pretty, uh, pretty scary at this point in time. We have to just hope that these uh, caster minions take out the tower, honestly. Looks like they may just do it. It's going to come down to the wire. Nope. Yep. Nope. Not nope. going to happen. And let me should be able to clear out this. 43, 43. HP. That's probably going to stay alive now. So absolute immaculate timing from let me. But AD carry has been unlocked. We talked about how Uzi doesn't like to do things until he's got his power spike. There's his two items completed. And now we're looking at the mid lane. Arrows up. Who's it going to hit? He's setting up for it. He doesn't need to do it right now, though, because there is a tower going down. And a hook flies out from Ming. Had that hit anyone, they were probably dead. 100% the arrow would have followed up on that cocoon, mm -hmm. as well as the death sentence. Oh, yeah. If anyone gets hit by any one of those three CC, they are 100% dead. Because it will be followed up from RNG. And the fact that they have so much non-committal CC, I'm really surprised that Mako decided to go for the Braum in this matchup. Because I feel like... Yeah, the Braum shield can do a lot to deny a lot of damage, but Thresh is just so good. At even if Braum catches that hook, he's still probably going to die. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you look at the entire side of EDG right now, and there is no one that particularly tanky. Look towards Mouse, obviously, but only now is he getting armor items. Uzi's going to tear through that one. And there is so much damage, despite him going magic resist on the top side from RNG, that he's going to be looking like a squishy member of the team regardless. Down goes the second dragon of the game, 24 minutes into RNG. That's just a, a little uh, nice accolade for them. It's not going to mean too much but it will reset the dragon and uh, we'll look towards our third one. Hope it's something different. Nah, it's a uh, the cloud dragon. But getting once that ramps up to three, then it'll be more happy. Yeah, getting relatively unlucky with this dragon RNG. So now that the map has opened up, this pick composition becomes that much more volatile as long as RNG are consistent on their vision control and more importantly, the vision denial game. They can start to move around Look at this Baron just because their team will shred it so quickly between Fizz, Blade of the Rune King, Ash, as well as that Elise. In the past, 
I would say probably weeks two through seven, RNG were an incredible Baron setup team. Weeks eight, nine, and ten, maybe not so much, but it didn't necessarily really count. They had yep. already locked into their position, so let's see if they go back to old or if new RNG is indicative that they might find some holes for EDG to slip in here. And I love the point regardless there for us because you look at how this game has gone, at least the first 25 minutes of the series, and this is a very much a different RNG to what we saw previously. A scout turns the corner, and now there's an, a LeBlanc right there ready to kill him. So we're actually seeing RNG back to form pre-week seven, week seven even, before they locked in that first base spot. So clearly RNG have been ramping up, getting ready to meet whatever opponent came in out of Gauntlet. I think they're almost kind of happy that it's EDG. You know, versus Newbie and Victus Gaming EDG, the three teams that could have faced them in this spot, they're the most familiar with EDG as an organization. And it's never great to look across at the Titans, but at least you know what you're going to get. Yeah, that's a very small silver lining, honestly, when you look at the... Look at it, but I mean, you never I guess know which Invictus Gaming you're gonna get. Like rookies, just gonna go sure. super saiyan. Yeah, Duke in the top side did not look like the same Duke we saw in regular season, so that's true. That's very true. But and the push is. Uh Carried on. What were you going to say there, Frost? I was going to say the other thing is I think EDG's weaknesses are, are pretty clear. You know, normally we congratulate them or compliment them on their strong early game. It's usually due to the fact that they prioritize individual winning lane matchups. But this time around, they kind of threw that away. And against RNG of all teams, it seems a bit questionable. Yeah, for sure. MLXG taking down this camp and he's on his way out. Did not get the pick there as Mouse was looking for it. Hook lands onto Mako and that was just a bit of that. That wasn't even a full combo from Zhao who he almost goes down, but multiple flashes coming in. Mouse locked up, he'll flash away. Big Fish coming in right on top of Zed. He's getting chased down and there is no escape from Let Me, but all the peel coming in from EDG all on top of Fizz might be enough. Softlair comes in, is not gonna finish off Let Me and no one miraculously dies in that entire exchange. And I feel like the MVP actually went to Zet's trap line. It delayed RNG from being able to collapse and follow up on what Let Me was trying to set up for the team. But that was so dangerous for EEG. If they had gotten caught there by the 5v5, A, RNG would run them down. They're just farther ahead right now in their itemization. And B, that would have surely meant a Baron if they had the health as well as the game. At the same time, that was basically Let Me diving on Zet and everybody from EDG trying to appeal him off the AD carry. But why are they even fighting there? Take a look at the vision. That's two control wards from RNG set up. And I believe there was a third one that just, just got cleared by EDG. And there's no buff there. It's not like we're fighting over Wolf Camp, we're fighting over Blue Buff or the Dragon. EDG just thought they had a pick and walked in blind. It almost paid with their game for it. True, but I do have an answer for you. It's LPL. And the, even the top <laughs> teams will do that. They'll just jump in there, get a little restless because nothing has happened in a, in a little bit. As Xiaohu is actually just dancing around Mouse, but he needs to uh, dance away at the moment because there comes the ultimate, but it just allows Xiaohu to ride the wave. Uzi, Uzi is coming in from the back. The legendary Ash Flank. She's going right on top of Mouse and will find the kill. Absolutely unreal. Here comes the arrow. Flash down what? and Scout walks into the arrow. He knew where it was going and Uzi will find a second kill in the bot side. Scout just honestly lost his mind right there. A, he separates from Mouse. He doesn't turn and help push the Ash who's trying to walk down Gragas. And B, then walks straight to the arrow after burning Flash. Have you ever seen an Ash flank like that in the history of League of Legends? I've seen Uzi play a couple hundred times. Yeah, that's true, that's true. That was uh, very reminiscent of Imp earlier in the split, flashing into the back lines as Caitlyn, but incredible. And that will turn right into a Baron here for RNG. There is still a contest, Fire Lolly over the wall, and it wouldn't be an LPL game with uh, a 50-50 Baron on the Rift. They do have the Control Ward, however. So keep trying to put in those wards to get glimpses of this Baron. Fish over the wall, lands onto Mako, and Zed, goodbye AD carry. Fire Lolly's not going anywhere. Mouse teleports in, Will Mako's also dead. And RNG were just toying with their prey. Uh, there was no danger whatsoever. And welcome back to form RNG. Yes, it's only game one, but what a statement to make right now. This is their bread and butter of the LPL. This is why they were such a dominant team during the regular split. It was their ability to control and cleanly sweep out Barons. And RNG have been exceptional as well at transitioning those leads into a win. And we now get the joy of watching them just split apart EDG. And then look at Mouse actually just can't do anything. Level 17 to level 14. No one can touch Fizz right now. I mean, he's probably tankier than the Gragas, and he does more damage. So 
It's the worst of both worlds here for Malice. He's trying his best to clear out this minion wave. Now the other thing that is really cool about RNG when they get Baron is I like to call them the two Baron team because with the first one, they'll almost 100% break your base, or at least they do during the regular split. With the second one, that's the nail in the coffin. So we'll see if they're able to turn this around or if EDG will get the, the miracle flask that they need. Really I said flask, going. I meant cast. I knew exactly what you meant. The flash cast, the flask. I, mean, I could I could see what Frost was going for because she actually did the, the animation for the Gragas ultimate. Toss? I was like, I get it, but no one else at home does. As the ultimate comes in from Zet, and that was a clone from Xiaohu, so uh, ultimate down for a couple seconds. Okay, Maps, your team needs you. you need to clear one more wave. All right, don't go full SOFM on us. Go back to base. He doesn't have TP as well. He needs to, he needs to recall. Okay, he's walking. We're, we're waddling down there. All right, that's fine. But RNG are already on this mid tower. Look how much damage they're doing. They're gonna have to do something right now. Scout gets caught out by the fish and he's down. Meanwhile, Zed getting chunked by the AD carry and the mid laner. Both gonna drop him where he stands. Mako's dead. Mouse comes in. Hey, what's going on, guys? Oh, it's the same community. Everything's on fire. Five and zero. RNG, clean ace, EDG. That's the game right now. EDG couldn't have died there. You have two options. Give away the inhib or give away the game. And RNG onto the Nexus Towers. 31 minutes into this game, 17 kills to four, an absolute whitewash, not a single tower to EDG's name, and they sweep them under the rug. EDG just got blasted by RNG, a completely different RNG than we've seen the last three weeks here. Looks like they took their vacation, rested up, stretched, and are ready to go. I'll tell you what, that wasn't an EU vacation, that was, uh, that was an LPL vacation, because whatever they did, they were training in mountains of the Himalayas, but they just came back and absolutely destroyed EDG, taking those early game advantages. And you can see after, what, 13, 14 minutes, there was nothing that EDG could do. Four kills. That's all EDG had to their name. Not a single dragon or a turret. Just, ah, uh, that is going to be rough. And it was really just based off the initial start of the game. MLXG walking in there, dying to fire lolly, dying again. And then after those two mistakes, it felt like he was just throwing them a bone. It didn't feel like after the 13 minute mark that RNG were in any danger of losing the game. And it's really on the top lane to set him up for that. Let me doing so much work on the Fizz. And you have to kind of scratch your head. Fizz has been banned again and again in the LPL. We know that Let Me has a small, effective champion pool. He's a carry oriented top laner. He doesn't play those tanks. So I don't know why EDG would overlook leaving that Fizz open and think that Mouse would be enough on the Gragas to slow him down. Yeah, it's a big question mark because at least uh, in the playoffs and out of the promotion tournament, we did see the 90% win rate Fizz drop a little down to 75%, but he's still a massive force. I just feel like you've got to take him away. Like we saw a lot of bands go to just random places over the map. Maybe that was even what the, the miss ban was looking towards, but in the end, the Fizz did so much work. But still, I mean, even in second rotations of ban, they banned Jace and Shin. And I understand the fact that you want to take away the Jace because it makes sense that since they have an AP jungler like the Elise, that they'll probably go for an AD mid laner. Uh, but why the Shin then? Like, it works with the composition, mm. but Let Me is nowhere near as comfortable on Shin as he is something like Fizz. Yeah, and at the same time, we talk about Let Me as a player, and he's probably the best top laner out of all the best teams in the league. He looks forward to 957. There's been games where he will uh, almost solo lose a game for the, for the lineup. He'll just run in and die. You look towards uh, Mouse even, and he's a good top lane. Don't get me wrong. He's had some insane performances over the split, but Let Me has just been performing better and better and better. He started from a, a middle of the table eight, uh, top laner to probably top of the table right now, and that was showcased in this game. Once he has a lead, he knows exactly when he can go in. And that's the nice thing about RNG. You know, we had a question, where are they going to put all of their eggs in the Uzi basket and just try to gank his lane repeatedly? No, they went back to the fundamentals. When RNG play around ML like she and then pivot between one of their three weapons if it's top lane mid lane or ad mm -hmm. carry they are so much more of a threat because they can choose not only how they beat you but where exactly they're going to beat you and this time around it was in that top lane that bled through the rest of the map yeah having quad power points just makes it so easy for them to adapt on the fly i want to look towards edg though because it wasn't all doom and gloom in the early game they did get a couple kills and we were then looking to fire lolly what can you do with this because he had the advantage over his opponent of course had a good counter gank on the top side 
outside, but his lanes started collapsing around him, and it was too many fires to put out. So we may need to revisit the drawing board and say maybe Firelolly could have done a little bit more of the gold that he had accrued. I think it was interesting what he was trying to do, which was acquire vision on Imelec Shi. Constantly he was pushing in, you know, making use of Scout's priority push or shove in that mid lane and getting those deep wards. But Imelec Shi was just two steps ahead of him. Be that the information that Xiaohu was able to give his jungler because he would have a ward on the mm -hmm. ramp so they would see Firelolly coming in. But he never managed to find the spider when he had the dueling advantage unless Imelec Shi was walking just face first into Firelolly. Like yeah. there was never a point where Firelolly was able to walk into him trying to track him down and let me of course take the MVP here yes he was given a couple kills early but that was off the back of him making an exceptional TP and he just snowballed that advantage he was actually just a one-man army yeah 100% expected and it was really this play that broke the game open for RNG and it's all about that fizz on the back line so things look bad for RNG here Ming does an exceptional job with the box to disengage the three-man unit while the two-man unit on the top of the jungle just obliterate EDG they blow up scout then EDG are stuck between a rock and a hard place and let me goes to town and honestly, Sea Stone Trident is a dirty ability. In team fights, onto an ADC who has no magic resist. I mean, you saw how much damage he tore through Zed in that fight alone, and then it just got worse and worse. And then the Fizz is going to get tanky. Then you just can't kill him. And let me really follow that through. So he is one of the power points. This game, he was the one to receive those kills and snow alert, but. Uh, snowball it ahead, but uh, just props to him. Yeah, had the Trinity Force before that gank even started. And like you said, with those three kills, was able then to grab the resistances. Yeah, and with that game one over to RNG, we are going to take a quick break as the team settle and gear up for game two. EDG up against RNG in our semifinals.